Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykanst, Superintendent of Schools. Joining me today are several students from Pollard Middle School and Needham High School who have been leaders in uh, the Needham Public Schools, some uh, just for the last year and some for many years. I'm uh, welcoming them here today so they can share some of their experiences and, and frankly they, they have some inspiring stories that I hope will uh, capture the attention of the community and some other students. Uh, I want to welcome Sam Cruikshank, a recent uh, Needham High School graduate, Sophia Kurd, a rising senior at Needham High School, Nathan Samani, also a rising senior, Stephanie Berger, who is a rising junior, Jace Grant, who will be in the ninth grade at Needham High School next year. Welcome, Jace. Etai Abraham will also be in the ninth grade, joined by Mia Christensen, who is currently in the eighth grade, but will be in the ninth grade at Needham High School next year. Thank you all of you for, for being here. I know it's a, it's a busy time of year, um, but it's, it's great to, to hear about some of the uh, leadership that you've exhibited in the schools and really have helped make the community, the school community, so much uh, stronger and, and better. Uh, Sam, congratulations to you as a, you. Uh, as a new graduate. Thank you. Um, I know you're, you're heading off to big things next year. You have had uh, experience as uh, the uh, class president for four years now. Yes. So you've been obviously uh, demonstrated leadership uh, skills. What, what's that been like? What's that been all about? It's, uh, well, it's been a great experience. So I, uh, I went out for you know, running for class president freshman year. And I just decided kind of, you know, before I went to the meeting stuff, I wanted to take a leadership role in, in the high school where I was going to be for the next four years. Um, and looking back, it's been one of the best decisions I've made in high school. Um, it's been, first, it's been a ton of fun, um, you know, doing all the fundraisers and stuff and working with uh, other groups of students in my grade. Um, but it's also been, I've learned so many great things about, um, you know, leadership and delegating and just kind of how to act. Uh, in public, in front of my peers, how to act as an example, how to you know be accessible, things like that, um, and it's it's been a great experience. One that I'm definitely happy that you know I kind of went for. It took a little bit of a risk, I guess, um, but definitely that I went for. Well, leadership does involve a risk uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. and I, I want to. I'm hoping get from everybody maybe a, a story or something you've learned about uh, being involved in in, in, uh, in leadership. Sam, why don't uh, maybe, uh, and we'll come back to everyone else, but. Is there one thing that sticks out um, in not if not just senior year but junior year, sophomore year about leadership where you said, "Wow, that went really well," or "Wow, it didn't go so well"? <laughs> um, yeah, we had a couple things. So uh, when we were, I guess something that didn't go so well first, we were in our freshman year. Uh, we held a semi-formal dance uh, in the cafeteria here, and we didn't uh, we didn't get that great of a turnout. We didn't didn't have that many kids show up just to you know make it quick. But um, that, it was definitely a learning experience for us, and I think we were all really disappointed um, after, you know, after the fact, after it happened. But we kind of got back up on our feet and held a bunch more fundraisers that year. And then we took a bunch of other risks. Um, this past year, we held the first annual uh, senior field day in the fall, and then the first annual senior barbecue this past spring um, in May. And those were the inaugural events. That was the first time it had happened. And those were, we basically planned those from the ground up. There was no framework, there was no nothing. Yeah. Um, and they turned out great. The weather helped us out, of course, um, which was a blessing, as did it, as it did for graduation. Well, you're, um, you're, uh, you know, one of the things you're suggesting is that there's some risk involved in, in trying things, and sometimes mm -hmm. they work out, sometimes they don't. But yeah. uh, when the ones that don't work out, you kind of rebuild yourself, and right. and as you did this past year with uh, the senior barbecue, it was a huge success, and senior mm -hmm. field day, which now. Uh, uh, our, our, our other friends here will be able to experience and, and improve upon. Um, so I want to I want to turn to uh, I'll get to our other high school students, but I want to talk to some of our Polish students who will be ninth graders next year. And um, Jace, uh, you have uh, Ms. Bibbo tells me that you were very much involved in Project 351. Um, tell us what that's all about. Uh, Project 351, the name itself, uh, it's a group of 300, around 351 kids from all over the Commonwealth, Massachusetts. And we serve, we get together like two to four times a year and we serve for the people who are in need. And basically two kids from each grade and Pollard got nominated to serve for R and represent for Needham. So with Governor Baker and Martin Richard and the people who... And Martin Richard, he's the... Tell us who Martin Richard is. Remind us again. Martin Richard, uh, he had a son. I uh, don't remember his name. 
but he died. He had a loss and during the was, during bomb. The, uh, the bombing, during the marathon bombing. He was the little boy, the little 10-year-old boy. Yeah. So recently, uh, last month, we had a peace walk for him. And they played pictures of him and had a slideshow. And we had a moment of silence to recognize him. Wow. So on that day of service, uh, all around the Commonwealth, 351 leaders were, were involved in, in service. Yes. Well, good for you. Good for you. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll get back to some of the other things you're involved in, too. Um, Mia, tell, tell us a little bit about my, uh, my understanding from Ms. Bibbo and the, and the Pollard staff is that you've been uh, very much involved in some service learning projects, particularly um, leading an effort to raise some funds for breast cancer awareness. How, how did you get involved in that? So in fifth grade, uh, m myself and four of my friends decided to just dress up in all pink. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, to um, respect breast cancer awareness, but and then this year we decided that we wanted to do a little more. So what we did is we bought a ton of pink s breast cancer stickers and printed out a ton of posters. And if like if you want to help out, you can donate a dollar. We give you a sticker, and then. We, so we raised a ton of money, over $300, and wow. we donated it to a breast cancer awareness. And how many other, how many, how many did you corral to get involved in, in that effort? Um, no, it was just the five of us. Well, the five of you, but you yeah. were, you, the five of you really uh, tackled that project and raised those funds and, yeah. and uh, handed the, uh, the check off um, to the American Cancer Society, or? Uh, we actually gave it to school, to school to give to uh, cancer research. Okay, great. Um, Itai, you're a peer tutor at Pollard. Yes. So yeah. what does that involve? What does that mean? Um, so it's part of the CSL program at Pollard. The Community Service Learning exactly. Program. Okay. Um, basically what we do is we sign in after school every day uh, or whenever we can make it and we go out throughout the school. We help students with whatever they need help with. We help teachers uh, organize papers, their classroom. We grade assignments. We generally just help out with whatever needs uh, help in the building. And uh, are there there's some students that uh, you've seen regularly, or is it different uh, students? It's different every day. We yeah. go around, whoever's there, whoever wants our help, whoever needs our help, we just help however we can. Why peer tutoring instead of, for example, you know, organizing students to raise funds for some project? What, what, ma what made you make that connection? Well, I think um, if you're going to give back uh, to a community, I think it's better to uh, give to the smallest and most local community first, take care of the people closest to you first. And I think giving back to the Pollard community um, is really important for us since we're part of that community um, and certainly it's great uh, to raise awareness for breast cancer and other uh, much larger issues but if you can do something uh, for the people around you I think you should take that opportunity. I think that's a that's great advice for uh, for a lot of us I think sometimes we we think about the problems all around the world, and there are many problems around the world for sure, but there are some opportunities locally to, to be involved and to lead. Uh, well, that's, that's great. Um, Sophia, as the ski team captain, now I hope I have this right, I should have this right, this past year uh, the ski team won, was honored with the MIAA, the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association Sportsmanship Award. Um, that was actually last year. Last year, okay. okay. So I, I had, it was within the last two years. Yeah. So, and you were part of the team then. Yes, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I'm sure, at least my understanding uh, from Mr. Halbert is that you exerted some leadership in, in making that happen. Um, so how did you get involved and end up being the ski team captain and the sportsmanship award? How, how did that all come together? Um, so my entire life I've been ski racing. Um, but when I was a freshman, I quit my like outside club team to just um, join the Needham High School ski team. And it's one of the best decisions I think um, I've made uh, athletically in the high school because um, I think that the community 
within the Needham High School ski team is just amazing. Like the whole um, goal that Miss Martin has for the team, like our mantra, I guess, is gumption. So we try to bring gumption to everything. And what does that, that mean? Do. What's gumption mean to you? Um, <laughs> we call it industrial worth eth work ethic. Um, but yeah, so we try to bring that to everything that we do. And um, over like the past three years on ski team, even though I was not like the captain yet because you have to be a senior, um, I, I do feel like I played a leadership role on, on the team. So you're looking forward to that, uh, that, that new leadership role. I, and as a, as, a, as a captain of an athletic team, there are, there are actually certain responsibilities and, and there are the school rules you, you need to follow, but there are also uh, MIAA rules that you need to follow. And, and um, I think uh, you must have or will participate in a leadership conference with other captains. Has that happened or will happen? Um, yeah, that's going to happen soon, I think before the year ends. Okay. Um, tonight, actually, we have like, um, like we're setting up like booths and stuff to introduce the um, like eighth graders to some of the clubs and stuff at Needham High School. That's right. And is that is that when is that happening? Is that okay? That's great. That's great. So you'll you'll be able to kind of uh, share what uh, what the ski team is is mm -hmm. uh, all about. Um, well, and, and you and and uh, been involved in so many other things. I think you you've been involved. Uh, with uh, um, uh, other uh, projects as well, and I, Stephanie, you, you, and uh, Sophia have both been involved in Girls Achieving Leadership and Service, or GALS, which I, I, I love that that, uh, uh, that that acronym. Um, you've also been in, involved in you know, Own Your Peace, and I know Nathan has, and, and all of you at the high school, our rising ninth graders will soon learn about it. Uh, what what's been your involvement in Own Your Peace? So for Own Your Peace, um, I have been on the Student Leadership Coalition as well as in the Ambassadors Club. So the Student Leadership Coalition is a smaller group of students um, who lead some aspects of Own Your Peace, which is focused on um, Own Your P-A-C-E, which is your inner peace, and P-I-E-C-E, which is your peace of the community. So we do things with that all year round. Um, and then the Ambassadors Club, which is new this year, is open to everyone, and it gives everyone a chance to step up and take a leadership opportunity in Own Your Peace. So I'm part of both of those. Wow, and it's a it's a big piece of the culture at Needham High School. I um, mean, with the dedication of the um, 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 I'm going to say memorial, but our sculpture uh, out in front of the school this year, and uh, the whole Own Your Peace Week. It's really powerful um, and, and really a key part of what goes on at, at, at Needham High School. Uh, Nathan. You um, are involved in, and, and I think Sophia as well, the Be the Change class. Um, what's the Be the Change class? Why don't you explain that <laughs> and, and what that's all about? So uh, Be the Change is a class at the high school in which uh, students are nominated by teachers um, based off of what teachers might see as uh, a leadership potential or um, someone who they think might have the potential to be a great leader in the community or just hasn't had the opportunity to step into a leadership role. And what this class is all about is um, teaching about different styles of leadership and teaching about some of the challenges that uh, you might encounter in a leadership position and also giving you some real life leadership experiences. Uh, one of the biggest parts of the class is we have an end of the year, well, end of the year to say a uh, project where we work throughout the year to get some change instated at the high school. For example, my project was um, trying to get some more art in the hallways and trying to get some spotlights on different artists that might not have gotten their art out in the school. Other projects have included the mentoring club that Stephanie started. Okay. Um, but those give you that real world leadership experience of actually getting out and getting things started and uh, headlining a project. So it's been a really valuable experience for me and everyone else in the class, I'd say. So who else is going to be the change over over time? The, the three. We're actually the TAs. Yeah. yeah. The next the, okay. So you'll be TAs. And there are about 30 students, 25 students in Be the Change. And this is a class that meets, I mean, it's a commitment because it meets before <laughs> school on Fridays, right? What time? Thursdays. Thursdays. It's 7, 10 in the morning yep. until about 8 o'clock. <laughs> and with projects and, and uh, it, it really is a commitment. Um, and I, what I like about it, and I appreciate you bringing this up, is that uh, the, the, the group is 
all kinds of students, some who may not ne necessarily stand out as a leader, but we're trying to encourage it. You know, it's interesting, Sam, who's been our president for the last four years, was not involved in Be the Change. His leadership grew in a different way, but others' leadership, uh, folks identified or tapped people on the shoulder and said, I think you should be involved in this. And so we're growing leadership in that way, which is powerful. Stephanie, quickly in the mentoring program, that was your project. Um, I'm thinking about Itai's tutoring and, and all that. What is the mentoring program all about? That's new yeah. this year? Yeah, so the new to mentoring program was my Be the Change group project for the end of the year. And so um, my friends and I decided to focus on this because we've had friends who have been new and it can be a really hard experience because there's some existing programs, but they mostly focus on like learning the schedule, not interacting with other kids. And so for um, the program, we have a group of mentors. Uh, this will be starting um, in the summer, actually, and going into the next school year, where, um, and Nathan will be one of our mentors, actually, and myself as well. And the mentors, and it will start with uh, tours in the summer, and then once a rotation, so there's a seven-day rotation, so every A-day, um, there will be a lunch for mentors and new students together, new students who choose to come. So they have an opportunity. The cafeteria is really large. It can be challenging to figure out where to sit, um, especially if you don't know a lot of people. So that's an opportunity um, for them to sit with people. And then also we'll have an after school club so they can hang out with people after school and get to know Needham and stuff. Wow. Well, that I. The ability to welcome folks in who, I mean, this is a big high school, it continues to grow, and if you're moving to the community for the first time, high school is a, is a tough transition to make. Any middle school, high school, those are tough transitions to make. So to have somebody who can kind of uh, assist you, guide you, or at least be someone you can ask a question or two about is really a, is a powerful thing. Um, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, actually, by um, all the different things that you were involved in. We've only touched upon a couple of the things that each one of you has been involved on and, and involved in. Um, I want you to know that uh, uh, Dr. Barnes and Ms. Kubra Argentari and Mr. Seacott and Mr. Cole said that, you know, they don't know the three of you yet, but the four of you are rock stars, in, in their words, along with several of your classmates, too. It's, you're, you're, you really represent a lot of what's going on at Needham High School and at, and at Pollard Middle School. Um, I do, um, one of the things I, I wanted to know about as I'm listening to each one of you talk is uh, you, don't, you don't just sh show up and start doing things, but there's certain qualities that one needs to bring to the table to be a leader. And, and I'm thinking about that because nationally and, and locally there, there are a lot of people aspiring to be leaders in the country. Um, and so you think about that. What what are some leadership qualities that are important, that either you have or that you'd like to have, but that you think are important in a leader, regardless of who the leader I is? I think um, determination. What is, uh, say a little you bit more about that. You have to be determined to persevere and to whatever it takes. Like, you don't stop. Like, you get through it, and no matter the challenges you come across. What else? Um, Go ahead, Nick. Oh, I was just clearing oh. my throat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think, I think that was a great one, but I think also ability <coughs> to connect to others, um, especially from my position as being class president and, you know, on student council and stuff. You know, there's 400 kids in your grade, you know, more 1,600 kids in the school that you want to represent. Um, so I think just listening to people, hearing their ideas and some of the, you know, changes and stuff that we've made, at least from my experience as student council, have been from, you know, listening to my peers, seeing what they want. Um, so I think, along with determination, I think is really important, determination and drive. I think also ability to connect and just kind of be, be a member, you know, have the leadership position, but be a member of your community um, and really understand that perspective at the same time. I think, I think I tell people all the time, one of the qualities, I'll jump in here too if I may, is, is developing relationships with people. Um, you, if you're distant from people, uh, you're not necessarily going to have them go along with you all the time. You have to you have to be able to sit down and, and connect with them, as you suggest. What are some other qualities? What were you going to add, Nathan? Um, I was just thinking that I think passion is a huge, huge uh, aspect of of a good leader because I think if if a leader is is passionate about what they're doing and is passionate about what they want others to do with them, then it will really show and it will push people around them to. Uh, to strive and succeed and have the same determination as they might. And that really creates successful learning environments and um, 
success at whatever a leader might want to achieve. I agree with that. I definitely think that's a really important part of it. Because when you really care about what you're doing, and if people look up to you and they see that you really care about it, they'll start to care more about it as well, and it'll encourage them to you know, try harder. Um, I think that like inclusion is a very important thing and not well I guess you could say in like friend groups too but as in like if somebody is very shy try to bring them into the conversation so they feel a little more comfortable and then they like start listening and they feel like they belong more. So to connect with people so they feel included and drawn yeah. in in the project. You know Itai you talk about passion and Nathan you do too and it's important um, I, I absolutely would agree. I think part of what all of you have done and will do is when you really are committed to something, your friends or those who are watching you say, why is, why is Itai so interested in this? Mm. I wonder if there's something to this, right? Is right. that kind of what you're speaking to? Yeah. I, I would imagine uh, as uh, leading the, the Subway Dwarves that some of that, pa I know I've seen this, some of that passion comes out. So you, you, is that something that you're, you're thinking about when you think about passion? Totally. I think uh, definitely having, uh, showing a love for, specifically in the Subway Dwarves, showing love for music or in any situation showing love for what you want to achieve or love for what you want to share with people will really create an awesome time for the group and, and push everyone to just do their best and have fun and really feel that same love for what they're doing that the leader would. Yeah, I'm not a member of the Subway Doors, but I'm a member of one of the other acapella groups from out of nowhere. And seeing Nathan's passion and the passion of all the people who are doing acapella inspires me um, and makes acapella just such an amazing community. You know, I'm, I'm thinking uh, recently I, I heard um, part of President Obama's address to the graduating class at Howard University in D.C. And he, he made a connection that you're all really making, and maybe we can, we can draw it together, that determination and passion are really key. But he also said um, that you need to be able to connect to others and you need to have a structure for change and for leadership as well. I think part of what he was referring to was there were um, some, some, some folks, some young people who felt very passionate about the economy or felt very passionate about Black Lives Matter and they were making some noise and they were getting angry, they were showing passion, but he encouraged them to take it to the next level, to go out and vote, for example, to uh, lead a cause or to raise funds or to call your legislator because, he said, uh, just to have passion, just to have um, good, you know, you know, strong feelings about something isn't sufficient. It has to be in some kind of a structure that will provide an opportunity for developing connections with people and including other people um, and, and really making some, some change uh, locally and, and, and in the world. Um, this is, uh, I mean, determination, connecting to others, passion, um, inclusion and including others is, is powerful. Uh, I asked, I asked um, you to think about, uh, is there some experience, as Sam shared, some failure, some, something that you tried to do, uh, whether it was either with tutoring or with Project 351 or with gals or whatever it might have been that you were involved in, it's like, uh, uh, that didn't work out. No one really cared about that. Did that happen to anybody? What happened? Um, absolutely. So on the speech and debate team, um, I like while I'm very active in congressional debate and several other types of debate, um, this year I started doing extemporaneous debate. And part of extemp debate is um, filing certain articles from the internet. And it's a very time consuming process where you have to read several articles and stuff. And since there was only one other person in Needham who um, was doing this type of debate, we had a lot of struggles trying to get people from our team to try and help us with filing. Um, and so we were like, well, this isn't working. We have to find another way. So um, instead, we um, got people from the local and national circuit to um, compile research that we've all found into one large database. And we now have around 28,000 different articles of research that we've all compiled together. 
So locally, you just didn't have the capacity to do this, so you decided, we've got to think about this differently. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if that was a failure. That was a success, <laughs> I think. You really, you really turned something that could have been awkward and problematic into an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's great. Who else has had something? I mean, I could sit here with you for the rest of the day and tell you about all the things that I messed up, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to do that. I want to hear from you. Is there something that was a struggle or didn't work out well, Mia? So for Actually, yesterday I went to the Dimmick Center, and it's a tr it's a center for children. It's sort of like a preschool, I guess. Dimmick Center think. in Roxbury. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's um in some places in Roxbury, it's obviously like a much different community than Needham. Mm -hmm. But so the kid, there was two kids, and one was playing with a ball, and the other didn't have one. And I was trying to teach them like to share with each other, but they were just very stubborn, and then. He started throwing out the ball at the other kid, <laughs> so I couldn't That's not really what you meant by sharing. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was trying to get them to share, but um, so then I just ended up just playing with the tag with the one of the kids while the other one played basketball, but it was hard because they were just very stubborn and didn't, couldn't really process the idea of sharing yet. So what do you do next time? Uh, try to teach him more, but... <laughs> It requires a lot of patience. To yeah. It requires a lot of patience, I think, to work with people, to lead people. You know, if you're going to be a leader, you have to, you've got to stick to it. You can't give up after a failed dance. You have to stick to it and think differently and, and try differently. Um, it, it really is a lot of determination and a lot of, you know, pursuing and pushing. Believe it or not, you lead our teachers and teach our teachers all the time and we learn an awful lot from you as I have uh, this morning. I wish we had more time but I, we're going to have to wrap up uh, because I have more questions for you and we'll have to do this another time. Um, but one of the, some of the things I'm hearing from our student leaders in, in Needham, uh, taking risks, um, giving back to the local community, I like that a lot, uh, gumption, um, <laughs> work ethic, really trying hard leading other teachers and, and uh, really taking chances and taking risks um, as Sam began with. All of that's important. That's all part of leadership. Well, thank you very much for all the leadership you provided that you will continue to provide, um, not just at Needham High School, but also beyond Needham High School as, as Sam will do. So thanks very much and best wishes in the summer and next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.